all the information that I know is from my the neighbors mm. that they were staying with. Mm. The only information that I got from my dad is like um her name is Maria Suarez. She's a Kenyan, she's from Mombasa. The first thing you'll do when you see her is what? I will run like a baby. <laughs> I will run like a two-year baby. I'll just run. I think uh, I I always have this imagination. If have to, if they have to tell me that your mom is down there sitting or standing waiting for you, I will just run and pass her because of so so much excitement. I would like run, run and run and run and run. You know, I was standing. Is this really you, mom? <laughs> is yeah. this you? Hello and a warm welcome to Tuko Talks. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now my guest today has traveled all the way from Gambia to Kenya in search of her mother who she says she last saw and heard of when she was less than a year. The only detail she has right now is her name Maria Swale from Mombasa and two of the photos that she carries around. She also says that this conversation is not easy to have with her dad because whenever she brings it up it's not something he easily and entertains she's about to share her story with us and so without further ado please allow me to let her introduce herself hello 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 hi how are you i'm fine uh, please introduce yourself. my name is fanta Jalo. i'm a gambian binational yeah. 32 years of age i arrived in the nairobi airport on the 24th of june okay in search of my mother yeah yeah um, how is Nairobi? Very nice, cool. It's super cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I understand right now the only thing you know about your mom is her name and the two photos you carry around. Yeah. But we want to get to that. But before we do, can you please share a bit of your story? How was life like growing up? To be honest, it's not easy to grow without your mom. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't find it better. I find it harder sometimes, but not always. Because I, I was grown up with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. He was, she was the one taking care of me and later my uncle and my uncle is a very nice man. Yeah, I brought up in a family that they are very nice people, very nice family. The only issue I have is like when it comes about my mom, no one wants to talk about it. Uh -huh. And at what age particularly did you get to the point where you knew you don't have a mom around and who was taking care of you that you thought this is possibly my mom? When I was young, I think my grandmother, I thought she was my mother. Oh. Yeah, because of the love and the support. It's like, I always call her mom. Yeah. Okay. So at what point exactly did you realize your mom was not in your life and how did it come about? I think like I was less than 18 years. There was this uh, album that I was looking at and I was like, I found this picture. And uh, I asked about the picture of my grandmom said that this is your mom. And I said, wow, this is my mom. That's the time that I know that, yeah, she's my grandmother. She's not my mother. Mm. But um, later on, then I, I move on with life. I never talked about it and I never asked about it. But one thing I, I, I always find different is that my father is always calling my grandmother mom. And I'm always calling my father daddy. So it's like, it's a bit complicated for me. So and then I realized that, yeah. She, she's not my mother, she's my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Then later, when I finished my high school, I asked my dad about it. He doesn't want to talk about it. He said, it's better you forget about that and move on with life and focus on your education. And uh, I didn't want to pressure him much about it and uh, I move on. Mm -hmm. I move on when I went to the co when I was in college, that was the time that I started the search. So I started talking about it. I pressure him to give me information but all what I can get is like I don't want to talk about your mom because whenever I talk about it it hurts me mm. I feel I also feel pain in my heart so I don't want to talk about it all what I can say is that um, she's a Kenyan we met in Germany mm -hmm. we got married there we came back together in the Gambia and later I left for US I left her with the family she gave back to you and later I was told that she, okay. she went back to Let's Kenya. go back so people can understand. So they met in Germany. Yeah. Who, who, who are they staying with in Germany? Well, I don't know when, who, who they are staying with in Germany, mm -hmm. but I only know that they met in Germany. Okay. They got married there and later they came back to Gambia. 
and I, I was told that uh, you know all this story is based on I was told. Yes. You know, I was also told that they had a transit in France, in France, and uh, my mom's name was changed to Fatiture. One of my Sorry, uh, <coughs> just be a bit clear. The, the mom, your mom's name was changed to Fatiture. One of his my my dad's friend changed her name to Fatiture for her to get an entrance to Gambia. Okay. Yeah. So mm. they came back to Gambia together, and later my dad went to US and left my mom mm. in the Gambia. <laughs> Um, when my mom, my mom was pregnant with me, so when my mom gave birth and later she came back to Kenya. Okay, so at this point we are able to identify your mom had two names, Maria yeah. Swale and Fatu Tore. And Fatu Tore. Yeah. You've mentioned that you were raised up mostly by your grandmother yeah. and that your dad left your mom when she was uh, pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, how did you reconnect with your dad? We always communicate on telephone. Have you? When was the last time you saw him? 2018. 2018. Yeah. So he came to Gambia to yeah. see you. Yeah. Okay. So does he have another family? Or yes, he's having a wife and a four kids. Mm -hmm. I have siblings, four. Mm -hmm. One girl, three boys. Yeah. Yes. You communicate. Yeah. H how does that make you feel to see he has a complete family, while else you don't? Well, for me, I know I'm a very fair person, and I'm, uh, I like to be honest. I, I feel happy when I see people with their family, but I was I also feel that like whenever I see people with their mom, I really feel the pain in my heart. Uh, to grow up without your mother, no one to say that, yeah. We all know the love of a mother. There's no love like a mother. No one can love you like a mother. No one can protect you like your mother will. So I always feel this pain in my heart, yeah. day and night. I always feel the pain, mm -hmm. yeah. And who do you talk to? when you're going through this is your grandmother still around she's she's very old but she's, uh, she's still around um, um the only time when i feel the pain the only time i have to pick my phone and call my dad i really think that i need this information you need to give me this information because this is very important to me that this is very hard to live without your mom the pain that I am feeling, I know it inside my heart. I know when I see people with their mom. I know when I see people, how their moms love them, how they protect them. I also want to feel the same love, the same protection. But it's not possible. Whenever I talk about it, you give an excuse. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to talk about it. I really don't know why. Mm -hmm. I, okay. This is the answer that I am looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Talk, to, talk to me about you embarking on a journey to Kenya. How did you get here and what steps have you taken to try and find your mom? And what answers are you getting? I started this journey and around 2018. T 2018? Yeah, yeah, because it's like a friend of mine introduced me to a journalist. So from there, that's why I started this journey. And um, I started saving bit by bit and uh, bit by bit. Every day, I work hard because I believe this is one of the dreams that I want to fulfill in my life. I believe if I don't do this, I will never be happy with myself. I have to give myself a chance, a trial, because I feel like this is a responsibility towards me. Because uh, I don't know, because uh, uh, there's this question that I always ask myself, why did my mom lo don't look for me? But I say, even though she doesn't look for me, I will look for her because I don't know what happens to her. and. Based on what was I was told, she, she, she went through a lot in the Gambia. What did she go through? I um I was told that uh, even my own that I uh, she went through a lot. Yeah, she she was tortured a lot. She was tortured. Yeah, uh, I don't know, but uh, she she went through a lot. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you always feel like even though she's not, do you think she's also somewhere looking for you? You know, sometimes because of, um, sometimes when you went through a lot, sometimes some people, they decided to make it as a story in their life that they want to talk about or yeah. they didn't want to. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like if she's alive somewhere, she, she may be also looking for me. I don't know what, if she is alive, there must be a, something that stop her from getting to me. Mm. Because we all know what, as mother, what, how far we can go to get to our kids, mm. to protect our daughters. Mm our sons, mm. if she is not able to do that, then there must be a big, big reason behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
All right. Do you hold any grudge against her? Any hard feelings towards her? No. Or what do you, when no. you think of her? What do you think about? Based on what I was told, hmm. I don't. I don't hold anything against my mother. Because what I was told is not her fault. We all know. Even your son is in the other part of the world, China or wherever. You know, we are living in a modern world now. Everyone is connected. So in one way or the other, because I see like it will be easy for her to look for me because she already know where I come from. Yes. And she, when she get to that people, it okay. is easy for her to trust me. Mm -hmm. So why? Why? Mm. This is the question that I always ask myself. Is either she is dead or she is alive somewhere that she, is, she doesn't want the history to repeat itself. Maybe she is doing it to protect me. You never know. Because sometimes you may be threatened. I don't know. I'm not saying that. You may be threatened or you may, be, you may experience something that because of that issue, mm. you, you don't want to like mm -hmm. to go through it again. And yeah. you, always, you only want to protect your child. And as a mother, um, we all know how to protect our kids. Mm -hmm. So in Gambia, she stayed with your dad or in your grandmother's place? When they came in the Gambia, they were staying with uh, a neighbor. Like they rented a place when they were building the house. Yeah. The house. They mm -hmm. bought the house. Mm -hmm. My father bought a house. Yeah. So when they were building the house, they were rented a house on the, around the area. Mm -hmm. That's where they stay. Yeah. yeah. Have you tried getting, if your dad is not providing you with these answers, are you trying to get them from your uncle or grandmother? And what do they know about your mother? All the information that I have, I never have it from any of the, my family members because no one wants to talk about it. Even your grandmother? Yeah. Even your uncle? Yeah. I never asked my grandmother much about it because the love she have for me, I do not want to torture her because I feel like whenever I talk about it, she doesn't feel good and she always do, she always do whatever it takes to make me happy. Mm. So uh, I think she's not the right person to be forced to talk. Mm -hmm. It's my father. Mm. She's, he should be the one mm -hmm. in the position to say everything that okay. I need to know. So all the information that I know is from my, the neighbors. That they were staying with. Mm. The only information that I got from my dad is like, um, her name is Maria Suarez. She's a Kenyan, she's from Mombasa. But everything that she went through, I know it mm. from the neighbors that they were staying with. Mm. They talked to me about it. And to be honest, I really don't want to talk about this in media, mm. but it, it's been poor. She went through a lot. Yeah, and uh, I when I after finding out all these thoughts, and when I talked to my father about it, he admitted. I said, "Yes, it's true." They were not kind to her. Yes. Okay. Yes, he went through a lot, and uh, she's, he admitted that it's just true that my mom was tortured, and she she went through a lot mm. when she, when he was not around. But one thing I told him is that okay, fine. Um, I'm not blaming you for what happened for now because you were not there, I was not there. But what we can do is that we need to stand as one person. Uh, we, we need to stand and protect this woman and know what she went through and find out where she is. We need to know her problem. Mm. We need to know what happened. Mm. But uh, this is one of the support that I never received from him. Mm. He never wants to support me on this issue. Yeah. Yeah. It's through my own savings, through the hard work that I'm doing, I am able to make it a, to a trip in Kenya mm. by myself okay. and the support of mm. my friends. Mm. My friends really support me in my journey. Mm. They are always texting me, calling me, give me, encouraging me that yes, you can do this and this is something that you need to do mm. or else you will never forgive yourself. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, talk to me about the first day you landed in Kenya. How was that like for you? I feel like I'm home. Oh. Yeah, I feel like I'm home. It's one of the best places that I ever visited in my life to me. It, because I feel I feel something that I feel like, yeah, I met the people that I am part of. I, have, I, I am here in Kenya, my people, my roots. Oh. I'm with my people now. 
And I, they are very nice towards me, to be honest. I feel like home. I've been, I'm treated like a princess here. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can, Gambia is a very nice country and the people are very nice and very welcome. Mm. And they are very caring people and very kind. Mm. And um, my, my family also, I still am in touch with some of my family members. Yes. I am in touch with them. They call me, see how I am doing. And they are always <coughs> encouraging me. Yeah, you are on the right track. Mm. You should do this. I think uh, some people were saying, wow, it was too late. You should have done this earlier. But everything happens at the right time. Yeah. yeah. What makes it, apart from the people, what makes Kenya feel like home for you? <laughs> wow. I think uh, the environment and, the, and um, the people, in a way that they approach you in a very nice way. They are very kind. We and are I nice. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, they are very nice people yeah. and uh, very welcome. And especially the woman that I'm staying with. Mm -hmm. She's a very kind lady. Yeah. yeah. It's someone you've known before? She's a journalist. Uh -huh. I don't want to mention her name, but she's a okay. very nice woman. I know her name. Yeah. She's, she's actually yeah. a really amazing person. Yeah, she, she yeah. did a lot for me. Mm. I, I feel that she also played a great role in my in my um, journey because mm. she was one of the people who was like, yeah, you have to come. When you come, you will get answers. Mm. So this is why I'm here. Yeah. I don't know uh, what kind of answers I will get, yeah. but I know I'm going to get my answer. Okay. Whether it's going to be a bad news, <laughs> like she said. You are ready. Uh, oh, whether it's going to be a good news, mm. but I'm ready yeah. because this is one. This is what I've been waiting for, and mm -hmm. uh, it can be anything, but I'm ready to take it yeah. with good faith. And mm -hmm. but the most important thing is to know who I am and know where I come from. Mm -hmm. I can call. I can also be in the Gambia and say, yes, these are my family. Yes. When you hear your mom is from Mombasa, you made a trip to Mombasa. Mm -hmm. How was Mombasa for you and what kind of answers did you get in Mombasa? I have to be honest, they are very amazing people. Okay. Yeah. They welcome me. <coughs> Especially, um, yeah, they, they really welcome me mm. with a great love and affection. And um, they say, yeah, here is your home. Yeah. If this is where you are looking for your own home, feel home. Yeah. We welcome you. Mm -hmm. Was there anything positive from the trip? Like a clue? What clues have you gotten so far? Um, people are still, you know, my, my work now is like uh, from interview from the social media, mm -hmm. the televisions. I always work on my inter uh, my comments. Yes. I will go through the comments and uh, when, I, when I see the comments and uh, if it is something relevant, I try to get in touch with the patient, mm. with the journalist. We try to contact the patient and mm -hmm. give us directions. Mm. So, okay. I'm this sure you are also receiving weird comments. Yeah, I I do, but it's normal. <laughs> it's, it's, that's normal. Yeah, yeah, oh. it's, that's normal. That's it happens to everyone. The absence of your mom in your life, how has it affected you? A lot, mm -hmm. a lot. Because a place of a mom is not there's no place like a mom in anybody's life. Of no course. one can take that place for anyone. You just do your best. You can love somebody. But at the end of the day, there will be a point in life that you will say, yeah, mm. she's not my mom. That's why she's not doing this mm -hmm. or he's not doing this mm. to me. Mm. Yeah. I always feel it when like when whenever it's like that was a time that uh, um, when like sometimes you win an award in school or you are in a, a very important mission that you complete all what you want to say is like, yeah. mom, I did this. Yes. I was able to get this. Mm. I was able to get this. The mm. first person that comes to your mind in life when you become successful is it's your, your mom. mom. And when you become sad in your life, the first person you will ever think about is your mom. Mm. Oh, mom, I wish you were here with me. I wish you were here with me to give me a hug. I wish you were here with me to celebrate this journey with me. Mm. Yeah. It's not an easy thing, to be honest with you. Yeah. It's the hardest thing someone can live with. Mm. Yeah. What keeps you going? My feet. Feet's keeping me going. I have feet and I believe dead or alive, I will get to this place. And I want to know where she is and uh, whether she's dead or alive, I will. I believe I have faith in God. I always have faith that yes, I will get answers to my question. It's either going to be a good or a bad answer, but I'll get answers to my question. As mm -hmm. long as I'm alive, mm -hmm. I will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This conversation has not been easy because I know your dad now, he's seen you on the media. He knows you're not going to stop. What is he saying? I don't know. I can't say about it because 
I don't know what he's thinking. I don't know what he's talking about right now. Mm. I can't say anything about that for now. Does it affect you that he's not really supportive in any of this? It does not affect me that much because I already know that he doesn't want to talk about it for so many years I've been trying. So I see this as this as a journey that I need to do it for myself. So mm -hmm. something that you know that with that then without the support you can you have to do it and you are doing it. That person doesn't have to affect you in any way around. Mm -hmm. You just have to believe in yourself and have faith that yeah. you are doing this and that something that you need to do mm -hmm. and you just have to do it and move on. Mm -hmm. Because if they have to distract you on what you have to be thinking about, then you won't be able to focus on what you, you want to do. Yeah. So it doesn't affect me. Yeah, I am good to go mm -hmm. as long as what I'm doing is right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Has there been a point in life where you felt like now I need to give up? This is not productive in any way. You know, in life, it happens to everyone. Yes. You give up. Good. You give up. There's, even in your thoughts, sometimes you give up. Mm. But I never give up. And I will never give up. I will still fight till, till I get to the end of it. Mm. Yes. I, I, want, I want questions. I want answers to my question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not giving up. Sometimes in your thoughts, yes, there will be time that you search, you search, you say, oh my God, I think I just have to let it be. But um, I mean, when you think and you think, you think and you, you have to have faith and believe in God that yes, as long as what you are doing is a good intention and mm -hmm. it's something very good, mm -hmm. you just have to believe in what you are doing mm -hmm. and just move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Your mom or her family might be watching you right now. Um, uh, has anyone told you what she was passionate about? Like what she loved doing? One thing I know about <coughs> her is that from the neighbors, mm. she liked to dress. She liked to dress. Very beautiful. Mm. Yes, yeah, she always liked to look beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. She's very clean person and she's very clean hearted. Yeah. Yeah. And kind. Very kind lady. Yeah. Yeah. All right. She likes to give. Yeah. Yeah. She likes to give. Yeah. For how long are you in Kenya? I don't know, maybe like four weeks, three weeks now. Three three four weeks, weeks to yeah. go. Yeah. And I'm praying that you get the answers that you are looking for. Yeah, I mean, I'm also who praying. Knows, yeah. Right? A lot of people are going through a lot of challenges <coughs> right now. Mm -hmm. What would you like to tell anyone navigating through different types of challenges? One thing I would like to tell them is that uh, let them have faith and pray and have faith in God and let them not give up mm -hmm. on their dreams. Too. We will get to there. We can get there in one way or the other. Yeah. Good. Huh? Yeah, because there is no love like a mother. And father's love also is very important. And one thing I always tell people, if my dad was in the same position as my mother, I would look for my father as the way I'm looking for my mother. Mm -hmm. So it's all about you wanting to know. My parents. Your parents. Yes. Regardless of whether yeah. it's your mom or your dad. Yeah. Regardless. I love that. Yeah. I love whether that. Whether it's my whether it's my dad or my mom, I think it's, it's a responsibility towards me mm. as my as their as their daughter mm. to know who my mm. parents are. Mm -hmm. If like my mom was a was in Kenya, I would do the same thing to go to Gambia and find out about my roots. I love that. My fatherland. Yeah, yes. I love that because yeah. also a lot of children are growing without their fathers. Yeah, I, I think they should all turn um, as I'm urging every mother mm. to come out and speak to their child because this is something that you will be emotional, tortured, whether they tell you or not. Sometimes in point in life, no matter how someone can love you and protect you, if you or she is, is not your biological parent, at one point in time in life, you would say, yeah, I wish my father is here, mm. or I wish my mom is here. Mm -hmm. So as mothers, as parents, we should all give the opportunity to our children yeah. to know who their parents are. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Talk to your, if your mom is watching this, or anyone that knows your mom is watching this, or even her family is watching this, what would you like them to know? You can just look at that camera. Oh, one thing I would love to tell them is that um, I'm here in Kenya in search of my mother and I want to meet her. I want to meet the family. I love my mom a lot. I've never met her, but I love some, I love her so much. And uh, one thing I would like to tell her, if first time I saw her, that mom, I love you so much. I miss you so much. This is one of the dreams that I want to fulfill. 
In fact, I love everybody in Kenya. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like I'm home. I feel like they are part of me. Yeah. I, I'm lucky to be part of two countries. Love from Gambia, love from Kenya. So mm. I'm so lucky. And the Gambian people also, they are very nice. Mm. And please, mom, if I, wherever you are, come out. I'm here. I want to give you a big, very big hug. Yeah. I love you so much. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for you. Yeah. Please come out. However the situation is, whatever situation you are, I don't know, but I want you to come out mm. and come for me. Yes. Yeah. The and the family, if you know her, please come out and help me locate mm. her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first thing you do when you see her is what? I will run like a baby. <laughs> I will run like a two-year baby. <laughs> I'll just run. I think uh, I, I always have this imagination if, have to, if they have to tell me that your mom is down there sitting or standing waiting for you. I will just run and pass her because of so, so much excitement. I would like run, run and run and run and run. You know, I was standing. Is this really you, mom? <laughs> is yeah. this you? I will jump, hug. I can, I don't know. I can express that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Only inside my heart. Wow. I really do hope that you find your mom mm. or find closure or find someone who is able to give you yeah. answers or even a tip. You don't even have any tip yet apart from the name and I the don't photos. just don't want to jump into any conclusion because some comments you <coughs> can be very hopeful. Yeah, this is, yeah, I am already there and it turns out not to be. Mm. So, has someone given you false hopes? No, not false, but you know, some people can be directing you to a place with their good heart and good intents yes. and tons and don't to be the person. So you have to be really careful yeah. with even the information yeah. that you are getting out. Huh? Yeah. And I wish you all the best. Okay. Thank and you, I hope um, you get to be reconnected with your mama. I what would so. be your final words to Kenyans? Um, my story now, I think it has nothing, it is it, it's worldwide. Yes. But uh, first thing I will say to Kenyans, uh, thank, I thank them very much for the, the love that they have given to me and the support, the encouragement, um, the prayers. Yeah. I am very much happy. I'm very happy about it. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate their support. Yeah. And together we can do this, Kenya. I need your help. I need the support. And uh, you guys have given it to me, but I still need it more. Mm -hmm. And I still want to move on with you people with this. In my search, I am not alone now. I yes. have the old Kenyans, the entire, are, world, yeah, entire world is you. with me and the Kenyan people are really with me. Everybody's supporting yes. me, everybody's te texting me, people are just texting me, calling me, you know. I really appreciate their love and support. Mm -hmm. Yes, Kenyans, they really make me feel home. And I believe you're on the right yes. track, yes. so don't, don't, don't give up. I'm not giving up. Keep fighting, yes. keep pushing. And for the people who would like to communicate to you, if someone has any information, how do they get hold of you? Yeah, uh, through my Facebook, okay. because it's like whenever the the interview is out, when they post it, they always send it to me yeah. on my WhatsApp, and I post it on the media, yeah. and I have some pages like a uh, to go. Yes. I uh, I already like your page on Facebook, so it's like whenever you are po you posted something, yes. I always follow them. All so right. when I like the page, mm -hmm. all the people that are following me on yeah. Facebook and my friends and yeah. my. I always post it on my YouTube channel mm -hmm. and my Twitter account. Okay. You uh, have a YouTube channel? Yeah. What's the name of your YouTube uh, Fanta channel? Jalo. Fanta Jalo. Yeah. And you have an email? Because I'm thinking an email is really easy uh, for yeah. people with no social media. Yeah, I have an email. Uh, you can give your email out? Yeah. Feel free. Jalo Juju at oh. 35.com. At 30. At? At 35. Yeah. 35. Yeah at gmail.com at gmail.com we'll be able to put that for our mm -hmm. audience uh so that they can get in touch with you and yeah. interact with you mm -hmm. and we wish you all the best thank you so i much. know this interview is long overdue but no, i'm glad okay. we got an yeah. opportunity to yeah. to do it yeah? and thank you very much for your kindness towards me oh really yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you really know. did a great job i feel without you the media i'm yeah. I'm, 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 I'm i have to thank the media for the support they have given yes. to me because yeah. without them i can get to this level yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. I really appreciate your work. You yeah. are doing a great job. Thank you. Keep it up. You are most welcome. Yeah. So you keep fighting and yeah. don't give up. Yeah. The main reason I hosted this guest today is that we can be able to collectively assist her in finding her mom. So once again, the details that we are able to have right now is her name, 
Maria Swale from Mombasa. We will be making sure that we plaster her images right here so that if you have any information, details or clue, you can be able to connect with our guest today on her YouTube account, on her Twitter, Facebook, on her email. And if you have anything that you would like to tell her, any information that you might have, I'm pretty sure she will appreciate. I don't know what she's going through right now i don't want to pretend i know i don't know what i would also do without my mom around but the best we can do is be able to even if you do not have any information of where the mom is if you can be able to send her a message of encouragement i'm sure that will go a long way thank you so much for tuning in and a huge shout out to my director and camera person the legendary edwin ochieng who gets to film this every time and to our in editor Chebet Kirui for compiling this episode and making sure it gets to you right on time. You want to share your story with me? My email is on the screen. Please send a well detailed brief of your story and who knows we could be sitting here with you sharing your story. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Lynn Gogi. See you next time. Mm -hmm.